Support for the Other Side of Coachella series on KBCR comes from the California Endowment, promoting a positive economic environment for underserved individuals and communities, and promoting fundamental improvements in health status of all Californians. More information at calendow.org. Hi, I'm Paulina Rojas, Program Associate and Reporter for Coachella and Incorporated. The Eastern Coachella Valley is a rural area located in Riverside County. This area is made up of four unincorporated communities and the city of Coachella. The Eastern Coachella Valley has a long history of robust agricultural production. The rural area, known for having rich soil and warm climate year-round, produces approximately $600 million in agricultural products a year. Yet families who reside and work in this area face several challenges like access to reliable transportation, educational opportunities, and health care. Despite these challenges, community members remain resilient and determined to bring positive change to their community. In this show, we'll learn more about the issues and community members of this area. For years, parents, students, and community organizations have advocated for the implementation of restorative justice in Eastern Coachella Valley Public Schools. Restorative justice is meant to help students feel safer at school and help parents have an opportunity to support their child's academic well-being. We'll hear from students and staff at Bobby Duke Middle School in Coachella, a school that implemented restorative justice last year thanks to efforts by local parents. There are times for punishment and then there's time for discipline. And so through restorative justice, through our efforts, through our circles, we're looking to see what works best here for Bobby Duke and our students. Remember, whatever happens in this circle or whatever you say stays in the circle. Um, you're not gonna be made fun of, um, but this is a good time. Like if you're nervous or you have some concerns about high school, just by creating a safe environment where the kids know that they're respected and loved and they come, um, not only they're learning, but they're having a good time. And also you guys are like a, a family now, right? Oftentimes infractions result in suspension from school, which means lost time from school, uh, you know, reduced instructional time, and the students have a fewer chance of academic success. So restorative justice is an alternative to that. It's really just a lot of common sense, teaching social skills, dealing with people like you would want to be dealt with, looking at not just actions, but also looking at a person's intentions, really taking opportunities where people make mistakes as opportunities to learn um, and to grow. My experience was like, really good. I got to learn more about my friends and how they're, how they're like, that they really had um, a lot of feelings about other people and they care about other people as well. It made, it made me feel more safe from with my friends, so now that I'm in middle school, I would like to be a part of another circle to share my feelings and everything that's happening. Yo decía, ¿por qué no hay un lugar para nosotros los padres? Entonces, cuando yo conocí todo este movimiento, fue que dije yo, pues aquí es un lugar para mí, porque tal vez esas cosas ya pasaron antes en la vida de mis hijos, pero esto es como una prevención para que no sigan pasándole ni a ellos ni a otros niños también. I'm just really impressed with our parent community that they would advocate so hard to bring us something that, you know, is such a great benefit. Se formó el piloto y el director estuvo de acuerdo, nos apoyó, se entrenaron a 10 maestros y ellos estaban encantados con Justicia Restaurativa. This is a whole different paradigm shift in terms of how, as administrators, educators, we deal with behavior, but more importantly, the growth in the students. And if they feel they have this avenue with their school, um, it can make a huge difference for their lives going forward, for sure. Restorative justice has helped me by like being able to cooperate better, listen better, talk better, and even get my grades up. It's helped me be more productive in school and actually stay in school <laughs> instead of being suspended. When there's a conflict, you can resolve it um, by speaking to each other and maybe end up being friends. I could say what's on my mind and speak my mind without being judged. More schools should have it. Now, we're looking at expanding our efforts to the middle schools and hopefully into the elementaries as well as, as well as the high schools. 
Due to the positive impact restorative justice has had on Bobby Duke Middle School, more schools in the Coachella Valley Unified School District are asking for training opportunities for their staff and teachers. Building Healthy Communities Coachella Valley and their partner organizations are planning to continue providing training for more and more teachers in the Eastern Coachella Valley. Now, let's meet Olivia Rodriguez, a resident of the Eastern Coachella Valley, who will talk to you about a unique program where young people are reclaiming the narrative of their community. Hello, I'm Olivia Rodriguez, a youth reporter for Coachella Incorporated and Thermo resident. Oftentimes, the only news coming out of the Eastern Coachella Valley is negative and focused on crime. But at Coachella Incorporated, Local youth are working to take back the narrative of this area and to tell the real stories of their communities. Coachella Incorporated is the first and only youth media organization based in the Eastern Coachella Valley. Through this program, young people are able to express themselves and uplift the issues most important to their family, friends, and neighbors. Coachella Incorporated is this really unique space where our young people have total control over the stories that they tell about their community. And so I think that's unique. We are the first and the only youth media org out here in the ECV. It's entirely free to participate, to participate in the training. Not only that, but our young people actually are paid to do their work. So we will pay them to write stories or interview folks or get these trainings. So it's, that's another unique aspect of the program as well. Carla has been with Coachella Incorporated before I even have been with Coachella Incorporated and she actually is the first young person that I got to meet coming into this space. I started off with a personal narrative about you know my mom's struggles with being a teen mom and from there I started getting involved in a lot of different topics and towards the end when I got involved with uh, Lupa I started really reporting on my community and getting to know you know what we struggle with but also what we have to offer it really empowered me to want to go to school and get educated and be able to come back and better my community. I actually met Alondra because she was organizing with a different group and I got to see the amazing work that she was doing in the community. When I first joined, one of my intentions was to learn to become a better writer and speaker and I was able to achieve that. Um, as a reporter and interviewer, you are like kind of pushed to talk to new people and others and I was able to encounter those type of situations. Lupe is one of our new youth. I got to meet her this year and right off the bat she had such a strong voice for writing. She has such a way with really illustrating on paper through words her community, her neighbors, her teachers, her siblings. She does it so naturally that all of her stuff is just a joy to read. Coachella Incorporated helped me gain confidence in my writing um, just acknowledging that it was okay to publish my work and then acknowledging that there was problems in my community. Just, I was never outspoken about it, I just accepted them before, but now I feel like I have a voice and that I can be heard and I have a right to share my experience. They consistently inspire me every single day that we get to meet with just their passion for the community but their fearlessness as well if we're doing something new they're not afraid they want to jump in they want to do it and I love that about all of our students they want to tell stories from their community and they just want to make our community a better place for everyone. The youth of Coachella Incorporated feel that the program has improved their lives they are able to share their experiences living in the eastern Coachella Valley their unique perspectives as youth continue to change the way other media organizations portray their community. One of the major resources lacking in the Eastern Coachella Valley is healthcare. While the area has a few community clinics, the closest hospital can be up to an hour away for some. Let's take a look at one woman's journey to get access to healthcare. Híjole, este pueblo del Valle de Coachella es bien trabajador. La gente es bien noble, la gente es muy humanitaria. Para mí era muy difícil. 
cuando no tenía seguro médico. Y yo estoy segura que, que la comunidad completa batalla con todo esto, porque cuando te dan medical de emergencia o restringido, solamente es para ir a la emergencia, un dolor o o algo grave, no es para cuidar tu salud. Yo no podía ir al dentista, no podía ir al oculista, y no es porque tú no quieras, sino porque piensas en el gasto que va a venir. Por decirlo, yo con, con la diabetes se me vino el problema de, de la salud de mi boca y las aseguranzas lo llaman que es estético. Entonces es muy caro, por decirlo a mí, para cubrirme un puente de, de, de cinco unidades era 10 mil dólares. Y 10 mil dólares aquí casi era lo que mi esposo ganaba al año. Entonces eso para mí fue muy frustrante y yo sé que muchas personas en la comunidad están batallando con eso. En el mundo perfecto, creo que tenemos que fijar el costo de la salud. Creo que una vez que fijas eso, puedes asegurar a lot more People. We're all concerned about the cost of medical care. One of our local MAs works right here, had a gallbladder condition. Uh, we couldn't uh, use her personal health insurance, so she had to go across the border to get the gallbladder removed. Una de las consecuencias de no tener dinero para cuidar tu salud o no tener una aseguranza médica para cuidar tu salud es de que vas descuidándote. En mi casa, en primer lugar, que haya que comer y la salud ahí vendrá después. Y no es de Siria, es necesidad de cubrir primeramente tus necesidades. We help them in an array of issues, not only enrolling with their health care and dental needs, but also with their basic needs. I think one of the things that I recommend for the community is to always be informed, to keep informed, to ask questions and not to be afraid. Hace años aquí no escuchabas a la gente hablar de salud, de derechos laborales, de nada, pero ahora hay organizaciones que han estado trabajando juntas, que se han unido, que han hecho alianza y eso nos ha ayudado a traer no nomás aseguranzas médicas, sino también a traer más trabajos y también a traer educación sobre lo que son derechos laborales. As you saw, it can be very difficult for those in the Eastern Coachella Valley to access what many would consider to be basic health care. Many in this community are forced to cross into Mexico for treatment because the cost of health services are so high. Local community organizations plan to continue partnering to make access to health care more accessible and affordable for the residents of the Eastern Coachella Valley in the coming years. For most people, missing a bus ride means having to wait 15 to 20 minutes for the next bus to come. But in the Eastern Coachella Valley, where buses run every hour and a half, missing the bus can mean waiting for hours under 120 degree heat. Let's see how a young mother ensures that she and her daughter never miss the bus. A day in my life would usually start around, I'd say 5.30 to wake up my daughter to get us ready to take the bus by 6.30 and walk to the bus. The one we're walking to right now is the closest one. So if I carry her, it'd be a little faster. But if I let her walk on her own, she, she likes to take her time and look around. Corey, we're gonna miss the bus, come on, let's go. You want me to carry you? Oh. All right, let's go. Yeah, so we would wait for the 91, and that would take us to the Indio station, and that we would make our route to school. So 91 is a big, a big help here in our community. A lot of people don't have transportation here in Mecca. People wouldn't be able to go into town to get their groceries, to, to go to the doctor, to go to work, to go to school. It would be very, very difficult for people to even have a normal life. So in my area, um, 
on the bus line 91. It comes every hour and a half. So if we don't make it to the bus even by one minute, you'll see the bus pass right in front of you and you feel kind of bummed out because the bus leaves you. I noticed that the, in the west side, the buses come every so often, every 20 minutes, every 30 minutes. But if we have to go somewhere, we'll make that struggle. Are you gonna pull the string right now? Yeah? There's no transportation, and people would make that even greater struggle to get to what they, where they have to go. My goal as a woman is to become educated and empower myself through education, so that way my daughter can look up to me. Our, our community has a lot of challenges, and I like how we all have a positive outlook on it. There's so many strong women here, and I noticed that the resilience in women are def is definitely much greater than any other people that I can think of. I appreciate seeing that because it kind of motivates me to do the same. As you can see, most of the issues affecting the Eastern Coachella Valley are rooted in transportation access. Having reliable, safe transportation can affect every other aspect of your life and opportunities. In this next segment, we'll learn about the environmental justice issues affecting the Eastern Coachella Valley. Though the area has a history of advocating for farm worker rights, there's a new generation of community members working to make sure their community has safe public spaces, paved roads, and better air quality. Let's see how community members are advocating for this rural area next to the Salton Sea. You know, before it would rain here, um, I guess the land that we're on is mostly clay. So when people would get mud in their feet, it was, it was really hard to, to kind of get it, get it out of them. So we used to wear uh, bags in our shoes. And um, right now you can see a little bit of gravel, but um, if you keep going more this way, um, you can see how the dirt is around us. So once that dirt gets um, wet, it creates about three to four inches of, of clay on your shoes. Cars would get stuck, so even, and we, even when public transportation wouldn't come in here, because um, now they do things to the uh, things to the asphalt, um, we had to go out into the exits. Maybe like four minutes driving. You can't talk about environmental justice if you don't talk about the lack of safe public spaces, and you can't talk about environmental justice if you also leave out farm workers' rights. I think we start with a recognition of what really a healthy community looks like. There are vulnerable populations that are being left out of environmental protections and our health is a result of what is surrounding us. The, uh, the Salton Sea, that's one example, that's one of the things that comes up uh, for many people, but also the pesticides around it, the agricultural fields in around our community, um, the waste facilities, and, and the location in which they're placed is usually within low-income communities. And also the actions needed by the community to to either alleviate some of those um, environmental factors, such as the pollution out right next to our schools, right next to our employment, and what are the steps needed to, to make changes in our community. When we talk about the environment, we're talking about much more than only the natural environment. And I think uh, when people realize that, we probably are moving a lot closer to being able to find uh, solutions. Having the pavement now has really opened a lot of recreational activities. Before we had to go all the way to Mecca and sometimes transportation was an issue. So now we actually have the opportunity to go out here, skateboard, go bicycling. So actually enjoy uh, our surroundings a little bit more. There's still being um, community gatherings being hosted towards the development of this park. So I think just even having those moments to spend within your community and to work together, it allows room for dialogue and conversation. So I think that's always a positive in terms of health. Because I mean, we are the ones that live here. We are the experts firsthand about what we're lacking, about what we need. We're the ones that know our, our realities and we're the ones that do have the solutions. So I think when I see a team of community members coming together to address those issues, that's when I see movement towards tackling issues in environmental justice. Building healthy communities, Coachella Valley and their partner organizations continue to fight for the fair treatment of this community. Exciting things are ahead for this resilient and strong community.
Today we learned about some of the most important issues facing the Eastern Coachella Valley, like environmental justice and access to reliable transportation. We also celebrated the resilient community and young people working to bring positive change to this rural area. For more information on issues discussed in this show, visit these websites. Support for the Other Side of Coachella series on KVCR comes from the California Endowment, promoting a positive economic environment for underserved individuals and communities, and promoting fundamental improvements in health status of all Californians. More information at calendow.org.